Hello. Welcome to Jesus for All Two. God's Word, Your Daily Bread for June 22nd, 2024. Here, we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life. Our goals to hear all of the Bible by the end of December 2024 to increase our faith. Because Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word to please the Heavenly Father. Because 1 Corinthians, actually Colossians 10, that you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him and desiring to please Him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God, with fuller, deeper, and clearer insight, acquaintance, and recognition. So, as well as to walk in the abundant life that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ redeemed for us with his blood, death, and resurrection on the cross at Calvary. For John 10, 10 to 11 reads, the thief does not, actually, John 10, beginning at verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. As well as to do the works and the greater works that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said we would do in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And some of those works are described in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17 through 8. But in the John 4, 28, 23 to 24 lets us know that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And our Lord and Savior in the book of John chapter 14, verse 16 said, And I will pray the Father. He will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you. And John 14, 26 lets us know, but the help of the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The book of John chapter 16, verse 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Amen. And so the words of life that we shall, and finally, let me, John chapter 15, verses 7 through 8. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. And John, and verse 8, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And Proverbs 11 through 30 reads, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Finally, John chapter 15, verse 16 reads, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is the commandment of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so the words of life that we shall receive today, June 22nd, 2024, are Psalm 67, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 through chapter 8, verse 29, 
and in the new new and the new testament reading from the book of colossians chapter 4 verse 1 through verse 18 the psalm and the prayer focus psalm will be read from the new king james version of the bible Copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. The Old Testament reading and the New Testament reading will be read from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Copyright 1954, 1958, 1962, 1964, 1965, 1987 by the Lockman Foundation, used by permission, all rights reserved. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for all too. I pray that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and that you are receiving the grace to walk in those promises. I would ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would share Jesus for all too with another, that you would subscribe, and that you would give the hand symbol that you like. Amen. And thank you to every listener of Jesus for all too, every supporter. May you be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. And now, Psalm 67. The theme of Psalm 67 is joy. Joy comes from spreading the news about God around the world. Amen. And it reads, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Verse 4. O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Selah. 5. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God our own God shall bless us. Verse 7 and last. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Amen. Amen and amen. And the word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Are every of us the hearers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for blessing us. And now Second Kings. Chapter 7. And it reads Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, a measure of fine flour will sell for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the captain on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, If the Lord should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? But Elisha said, You shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now four men who were lepers were at the entrance of the city's gate, and they said to one another, Why do we sit here until we die? For if we say we will enter the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. So now, come, let us go over to the army of the Syrians. If they spare us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall, we shall but die. Verse 5. So they arose in the twilight and went to the Syrian camp. But when they came to the edge of the camp, no man was there. 6. For the Lord had made the Syrian army hear a noise of chariots and horses, the noise of a great army. They had said to one another, The king of Israel has hired the Hittite and the Egyptian kings to come upon us. 7. So the Syrians arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents, horses, donkeys, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. 8. And when these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank, and carried away silver, gold, and clothing, and went and hid them in the darkness. Then they entered another tent and carried from there also, and went and hid it. 9. Then they said to one another, We are not doing right. This is a day of glad good news, and we are silent and do not speak up. If we wait until daylight some punishment will come upon us for if us for not reporting once at once so now come let us go and tell the king's household verse 10 so they came and called to the gatekeepers of the city they told them we came to the camp of the syrians and behold there was neither sight nor sound of man there 
only the horses and the donkeys tied, and the tents as they were. Then the gatekeeper was called out, and it was told to the king's household within twelve. And the king arose in the night and said to his servants, I will tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry, therefore they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the open country, thinking when we come out of the city, we shall take them alive and get into the city. 13. One of his servants said, Let some men take five of the remaining horses, if they are caught and killed, that they will be no worse off than all the multitude of Israel left in the city to be consumed. Let us send and see. Verse 14. So they took two chariot horses, and the king sent them after the Syrian army, saying, Go and see. They went after them to the Jordan. All the way was strewn with clothes and equipment, which the Syrians had cast away in their flight. And the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, as the Lord had spoken through Elisha. The king had appointed the captain on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate, and the starving people trampled him in the gate as they struggled to get through for food, and he died, as the man of God had foretold when the king came down to him. 18. When the man of God had told the king, Two measures of barley shall sell for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel tomorrow, about this time in the gate of Samaria. The captain had told the man of God, If the Lord should make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he said, You shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Twenty, and, and so it was fulfilled to him, for the people trampled on him in the gate, and he died. Chapter 8 Now Elisha had said to the woman whose son he had restored to life, Arise and go with your household and sojourn wherever you can. For the Lord has called for a famine, and moreover it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman arose and did as the man of God had said. She went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. At the end of the seven years the woman returned from the land of the Philistines, and she went to appeal to the king for her house and land. The king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me all the great things Elisha has done. 5. And as Gehazi was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, behold, the woman whose son he had, resto had restored to life appeared to the king for her house and land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O, o king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha brought back to life. 6. Verse 6. When the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed to her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. 7. Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, was sick, and he was told, The man of God has come here. And the king said to Hazel, Take a present in your hand, and go meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by saying, Shall I recover from this disease? So Hazel went to meet Elisha, and took a present with him of every good thing of Damascus, forty camel loads, and came and stood before him, and said, Your son Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to you, asking, Shall I recover from this disease? And Elisha said, Go, say to him, You shall certainly recover. But the Lord has shown me that he shall certainly die. Elisha stared steadily at him until Hazel was embarrassed, and the man of God wept. 12. And Hazel said, Why do you weep, my lord? He asked, Because I know the evil that you will do to the Israelites. You will burn their strongholds, slay their young men with the sword, dash their infants in pieces, and rip up their pregnant women. And Hazel said, What is your servant, only a dog, that he should do this monstrous thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you will be king over Syria. Then Hazel departed from Elisha and came to his master, who said to him, Why did Eli What did Elisha say to you? And he answered, He told me you would surely recover.
15. But the next day Hazel took the bedspread and dipped it in water and spread it on the Syrian king's face, so that he died, and Hazel reigned in his stead. 16. In the fifth year of Joram, king of Ahab, Verse 16, in the fifth year of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, being then king of Judah, Joham, Jehoram, son of Josephat, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 32 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, as did the house of Ahab, for Athaliah, the daughter of Ahab, was his wife. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet for David his servant's sake, the Lord would not destroy Judah, for he promised to give him and his sons a lamp forever. 20. In his days Edom revolted from the rule of Judah and set up a king over themselves. 21. So Jehoram, or Judah, went, from, went over to Zair with all his chariots. He and his chariot commanders rose up by night and slew the Edomites, who had surrounded them, and escaping his army fled home. Verse 22. So Edom revolted from the rule of Judah to this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. The rest of the acts of Jehoram and all that he did, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? Verse 24. Jehoram slept with his fathers and was buried with them in the city of David. Ahaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. In the twelfth year of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Omri, king of Israel. He walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, as did the house of Ahab, for his father was son-in-law of Ahab. Ahaziah went with Joram, son of Ahab, to war against Hazel, king of Syria, in Ramath Gilead, and the Syrians wounded Joram. 29. And last for today, King Joram returned to Jezreel to be healed of the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah, when he fought against Hazel, king of Syria. And Ahaziah, son of Joram, Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ are every of us the hearers. And now the New Testament reading, continuing today with the book of Colossians. It's chapter 4 and it reads, Masters, on your part, deal with your slaves justly and fairly, knowing that also you have a master in heaven. To be earnest and unwearied and steadfast in your prayer life, being both alert and intent in your prayer with thanksgiving. And at the same time, pray for us also that God may open a door to us for the word, the gospel, to proclaim the mystery concerning Christ the Messiah, on account of which I am in prison. Verse 4. That I may proclaim it fully and make it clear, speak boldly and unfold that mystery, as is my duty. Behave yourselves wisely, living prudently and with discretion in your relations with those of the outside world, the non-Christians, making the very most of the time and seizing, buying up the opportunity. 6. Let your speech at all times be gracious, pleasant, and winsome, seasoned, as it were, with salt, so that you may never be at a loss. To know how you ought to answer it. 5. Behave yourselves wisely wisely, living prudently and with discretion, in your relations with those of the outside world, the non-Christians, making the very most of the time and seizing buying up the opportunity. 6. Let your speech at all times be gracious, pleasant, and winsome, seasoned as it were with salt, so that you may never be at a loss to know how you ought to answer anyone who puts a question to you. 7. Titicus will give you full information about my affairs. He is a much-loved brother and faithful ministering assistant and fellow servant with us in the Lord. 
I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are faring, and that he may comfort and cheer and encourage your heart. Verse 9 And with him is Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of yourselves. They will let you know everything that has taken place here in Rome. 10. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, wishes to be remembered to you, as does Mark, the relative of Barnabas. You received instruction concerning him. If he comes to you, give him a hearty welcome. 11. And greetings also from Jesus, who is called Justice. These Hebrew Christians, alone of the circumcision, are among my fellow workers. Verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of your servants, yourselves, a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. He is always striving for you earnestly in his prayers, pleading that you may, you may, as persons of ripe character and clear conviction, stand firm and mature in spiritual growth, convinced and fully assured in everything willed by God. 13. For I bear him testimony that he has labored hard in your behalf and for the believers in Laodicea and those in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas salute you. 15. Give my greetings to the brethren in Laodicea and to Nympha and the assembly, the church, which meets in her house. And when this epistle has been read before you, see that it is read also in the assembly, the church of the Laodiceans, and also see that you yourselves, in turn, read the letter that comes to you from Laodicea. 17. And say to Akipas, see that you discharge carefully the duties of the ministry and fulfill the stewardship which you have received in the Lord. 18. And last. I, Paul, add this final greeting, writing with my own hand, Remember, I am still in prison and in chains. My May grace, God's unmerited favor and blessing be with you. Amen. Amen. Amen, which means so be it. And now, Psalm 91, which is our prayer focus. For the month of June. In the new in the New King James Version, and it reads He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers. Ah, oh, I am reading this as a prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us proceed. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you that I dwell in the secret place of you, the Most High, and abide under the shadow of the Almighty, your almighty wings. I say of you, O Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God, in you I will trust. Verse 3. Surely you will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. In the name of Jesus Christ you shall cover me with your feathers, and under your wings you sh I shall take refuge. Your truth shall be my shield and buckler. In the name of Jesus Christ, I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays at noonday. Not me, not my family, not my church. And I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A thousand may fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me, my children, my family, or my church. In the name of Jesus, only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that because I have made you the Lord my refuge, even you the Most High, my dwelling place, no evil shall befall me, my children, my family, my church, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling. For you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, shall give your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. In their hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that I shall tread on the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent I shall trample underfoot, as you said I should do 
in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19 because you have set because I have set my love upon you O Lord in the name of Jesus Christ therefore you will deliver me you will set me on high because I have known your name thank you father that as I call upon you you will answer me you will be with me in trouble and you will deliver me and honor me with long life you will satisfy me and my family and my children and my church with long life father in the name of jesus christ thank you for satisfying me and showing me salvation by the blood of your holy son jesus and the forgiveness of sin in the mighty name of jesus christ we have prayed and we thank you father in the name of jesus christ for Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.